Hey, this is Dexter. In this video, we'll be learning about quadratic equations and inequalities. The question begins with a curve equation y is equal to p plus 2x squared minus 10x plus 2p plus 1, where p is a constant. In part 1, where p is equal to 2, find a set of x for which the curve lies above y is equal to 1. In part 2, find a range of p for which the curve is completely below y is equal to 2x plus 3. This question is from Zhonghua Secondary School 2021 Preliminary Examination for Additional Mathematics. Pause to give it a try, and when you're ready, keep watching. We will begin the solution by replacing p to be equal to 2 into the curve equation to give us a quadratic equation of y equals to 4x squared minus 10x plus 5. Since the curve is above the line y equal to 1, we will form an inequality by setting 4x squared minus 10x plus 5 greater than 1, which we can simplify to 4x squared minus 10x plus 4 greater than 0. Then, we factorize it to be a product of 2x minus 1 and x minus 2 to be greater than 0. To solve this quadratic inequality, we will now sketch out y equal to 4x squared minus 10x plus 4. Next, we write in the x in the sets of half and 2 found from the factorization earlier. The part where 4x squared minus 10x plus 4 greater than 0 refers to the region above the x-axis. We can clearly tell that there are two ranges of x that fits inside this region, of which the first one being x to be lesser than half, or x to be greater than 2. And that's the answer for part 1. For part 2, it was mentioned that the curve is now completely below y equal to 2x plus 3. We will now illustrate this with a sketch. Next, we form an inequality by setting the curve to be lesser than 2x plus 3. Simplifying this inequality will give us p plus 2x squared minus 12x plus 2p minus 2 to be lesser than 0. From the sketch, we can tell that it is a maximum curve, which means that the coefficient of x squared, which is p plus 2, must be lesser than 0. Solving for this linear inequality will give a result of p to be lesser than negative 2. Next, let's discuss about discriminants. As we can tell that the curve does not intersect the line, there are no real roots. For general quadratic equation y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, discriminant b squared minus 4ac must be lesser than 0. And we will now set the discriminant to be lesser than 0 to give us this quadratic inequality, where b squared refers to the square of coefficient of x, which is negative 12, minus 4ac, where a is the coefficient of x squared, which is p plus 2, and constant c is 2p minus 2. We will now expand and simplify this inequality, and factorizing it will give us the product of p plus 5 and p minus 4 to be greater than 0. You are also reminded to flip the lesser than symbol to a greater than symbol since we are multiplying by negative 1 throughout this inequality. To solve this quadratic inequality, we are now illustrate with a sketch. Next, we write in the horizontal intersects of negative 5 and 4 found from the earlier factorization. The part where p squared plus p minus 20 is greater than 0 refers to the region above the horizontal axis. Clearly, there are two ranges of p with the first one being p to be lesser than negative 5, or p to be more than 4. We will now solve the simultaneous quadratic inequalities by presenting on the number line. The first set of inequality is p less than negative 2, which we present it with a hollow circle above negative 2 and an arrow pointing to the left. The next set of inequality involves p less than negative 5, or p greater than 4, which we present it with a hollow circle above 4 and an arrow pointing to the right. From here, we can tell that the solution set, which is the overlapping part that fulfills both sets of inequality, is p less than negative 5. Thus, the answer for part 2 is p less than negative 5. Let's practice another similar question from Anderson Secondary 2021 Preliminary Examination. 
The question begins with a curve 2y equal to 3x squared minus 3px minus 2q minus 1, where both p and q are constants. A line y equal to p minus q minus 2x is tangent to the curve at point A. In part 1, show that p is equal to negative 2 or negative 14. In part 2, it is now given that the curve passes through coordinates 0, comma, negative 5.5. Find the coordinates of A if P is equal to negative 2. Pause to give it a try and when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. We will begin the solution by replacing the tangent equation into the curve. Simplifying and rearranging it will give us a quadratic equation of 3x squared plus 4 minus px minus away 2p minus 1 to be equal to 0. Unlike the previous question where the coefficient of x squared is unknown, the coefficient of x squared for this question is constant 3, which is greater than 0. Thus, the curve is a minimum curve. We will only need to examine the discriminant of this quadratic equation. As the line meets the curve at only one point, this means that there are two real and equal roots. So, for general quadratic equation y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, discriminant b squared minus away 4ac must be equal to 0. We will now set our discriminant to be 0 to give us this new equation consisting of only unknown p, where b squared refers to the square of the coefficient of x which is 4 minus p, minus way 4ac where a is the coefficient of x squared which is 3, and constant c is negative 2p minus way 1. Next, we will expand and simplify this equation, and factorizing it will give us the product of p plus 2 and p plus 14. Solving for p will give the answer for part 1 to be negative 2 and negative 14. In part 2, given that the curve passes through coordinates 0, negative 5.5, we will now replace y to be negative 5.5 and x to be 0 into the curve equation. Solving for q will give us 5. Next, we are going to solve simultaneous equation by reusing the equation from part 1 where we substituted the tangent into the curve equation. The reason for doing so is because both the tangent and curve passes through point A. Then, we replace p to be negative 2. After simplifying and factorizing the quadratic equation, we should be able to get x to be equal to negative 1. By replacing x to be negative 1, p to be negative 2, and q to be 5 into the tangent equation, solving for y will give us negative 5. And that's the coordinates of a. Did you manage to get the answers? Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today and see you in the next episode of Practical Math.